Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplify's tutorials. In this tutorial we're gonna look into something very interesting. We're gonna simplify the mukbang psychology. We're gonna understand what mukbangs are, why on earth people choose to watch other people eat and what the impact is of such videos. And as always we're gonna look into academic research to back any claims and observations. Now the internet as we know, is a very fascinating place. It's always fascinating to find out why people enjoy watching certain kind of content online. More than a billion hours worth of YouTube content is watched by people around the world every single day. And an interesting type of content called mukbangs came to my attention not too long ago. And I was blown away by the fact that millions of people all over the world tune in to watch video streams to watch other people eat. I was a bit late into the bandwagon, I only understood what mukbangs are not too long ago. So today in this video we're going to look into academic material to gauge the psychological reasons people have to choose to watch mukbangs and also look at the impact they have on the human mind and on our society. There will be a very interesting discussion at the end of this video. I want you to contribute to it for sure, so please stay tuned till the end. Now what are mukbangs? For the uninitiated, I want to start off on the term itself and where, you know, how it came about. The word mukbang has its origins in South Korea. It's a combination of the word myoknun, which means eating, and bang song, which means broadcast. The word mukbang therefore means eating broadcast. Now, in mukbang streams, streamers would eat a variety of food, often with high-definition audio of chewing, crunching, slurping, etc. Some of, this, some of these videos are streamed live, whereas others are actually recorded, and they're recorded quite regularly. Now, streamers often tend to communicate a lot, it seems, with the, the viewers, and also often descri describe the, the taste, the texture, the fragrance of the food being consumed and many of them also consume an enormous quantity of food to try and provide the, the viewer a multi-sensory experience. So it's a very interesting kind of content. Now let's look categorically into the reasons people watch these videos of other people eating. Now there are various categories of reasons. The first category is social reasons. A number of studies conducted have revealed that a lot of people around the world live alone and either occasionally or constantly suffer from social isolation. Now watching mukbangs gives a lot of people an emotional connection and can help them cope with their isolation especially when it comes to eating. Now a study by Spence et al in 2019 concluded that mukbang could be used to psychologically facilitate the feelings of eating together with other another person. So one can actually feel the presence of another person and feel that they're eating with somebody else. Chloe 2019 specified that eating together is an important aspect of South Korean culture where mukbangs originated but other studies have found that eating together is actually an important part of most cultures, thereby explaining the global popularity of mukbangs. Now, streams with multiple mukbangers eating together are often more popular than stri single streamer videos. It is therefore clear that a lot of people want to be eating with other people. And when this isn't possible in real life, they resort to watching mukbangs while having their meals. Uh, an in interesting study by Gillespie 2019 observed that certain female viewers get drawn to watching other females who were eating very large portions of unhealthy food in a loud and messy manner. And this could be because of their own eating styles and their own eating styles being conservative and traditional. So. It's a very interesting observation. Conservative and contrasting eating styles can actually lead to a person witnessing these videos of somebody, more likely a woman, eating a massive amount of food. 
Bruno and Chung 2017 elaborates on another social aspect of mukbangs, and these are the chats, comments, and likes, which grant people a sense of being a part of a community. Now, human beings always like to be associated with some sort of a community, some sort of a group. They like a feeling of belongingness. So, mukbangs also facilitate a feeling of community to a lot of people. A lot of mukbangers enable live chats. And these live chats enable a social connection to a lot of viewers who can actually stay logged in and interact with one another even after the eating sessions are finished. So that was social factors. Now let's look at the next factor, which is diet and weight loss. Extremely interesting. One of the things that mukbangs have become really wide known for is as aids to dieting and weight loss. Now, Chloe 2019 again stated that certain viewers extracted gratification from watching mukbangs as mukbangers would consume ample amounts of the very food that they wished to avoid eating as they were themselves on a diet. Studies have also revealed that while certain people derive the pleasure of eating while watching others eat, others can actually get disgusted by watching people eat vast amount of food and thereby get motivated to continue on their own diet. They don't want to be like the person that they're watching. Donner 2017 observed that certain female viewers watch mukbangs to satisfy their own desire, to satisfy their own actual desires of eating large amounts of unhealthy food while avoiding these themselves. Gillespie 2019 stated that some viewers on diets create an alternate reality in their minds wherein they become the mukbangers while they eat and that they feel that their own cravings are satisfied. Some mukbangers cater to dieting viewers themselves by letting such viewers decide what to eat. So they actually give the option of deciding what to eat to the viewers themselves and dieting viewers would normally suggest foods they themselves would avoid. Certain studies, therefore, went to the next stage by actually eating, uh, equating mukbangs to, to pornography in a way, and coining the term food porn. They state that mukbangers responding to fan requests live is actually similar to webcam porn and see mukbangers as being similar to porn stars in a way, who would eat anything asked by their viewers in exchange of money. The next category of reasons is sexual use. Continuing on from the idea of mukbangs being food porn, we understand that there can be a sexual angle to viewing mukbangs. Donner 2017 concluded that slim and attractive female mukbangers are often viewed by over overweight male viewers who tend to sexualize them. It was also observed that mukbangers can often also be sexualized because of being in a private setup and also being vulnerable while eating. A study by Pereira 2019 stated that the sexual attractiveness of mukbangers is directly related to their popularity, not just their physical attractiveness. Other studies, however, found a more direct link of likability to popularity. A study in 2018 made an interesting observation that women having a large appetite and eating large amounts of harmful food goes against societal norms and can therefore then become sexually attractive to certain types of viewers. Very interesting. The next category of reasons is an escape from reality. Now, various studies have also revealed that mukbangs can provide certain people an escape from reality. Some viewers tend to watch people eat exotic foreign foods which they don't themselves have access to. Now, these could vary between people who are in hospitals, for instance, undergoing treatment, to, to youngsters who are hungry late at night and cannot order whatever type of food that they want to eat at that point in time. So for these people, it, became, it, it becomes like an alternate reality where they can actually look at content wherein other people are actually consuming these very types of food. 
A 2015 study stated that many South Koreans use mukbangs as an escape from their hyper-competitive work lives, but it's clear that this could hold true for, for mukbang viewers all over the world, not just restricted to South Koreans. The next category of reasons is entertainment and gratification. There are viewers who just watch mukbangs as a form of entertainment, as simple as that, and viewers who watch them because of a feeling of gratification or satisfaction. Now, these are two slightly different things. Wu 2018 stated that exaggerated sounds of chewing and slurping produced in mukbangs can actually trigger an autonomous sensory meridian response or called ASMR in some people. So it is actually a feel-good response generated by your mind, which essentially results in a tingling sensation in people's skin and also gives them a sense of happiness and relief. So this is what makes them want to come back for more and more similar content. So for some people, it's not just entertainment, but it is the gratification resulting from an ASMR and almost often becomes like a thing that they keep coming back to over and over again as it satisfies a special craving in their bodies. There is also an element of amusement and satisfaction uh, and gratification derived out of sharing eating videos with other people and deriving a community experience out of it. Now sharing and getting likes from other people is anyway a category of gratification in this day and age. People like sharing content with the people that they're close to. People also like getting likes and this is also the case for a specific type of content which is mukbangs. Now the next category is care and curiosity. Very important because many streamers share content as a means of sharing their life stories or journeys. Some people provide great insights into their psyche and treat viewers as family or friends with whom they can actually share the ups and downs in their lives. Many viewers therefore get connected and also invested in their stories and want to find out what happens next. These people maintain an emotional connect with these streamers. Many people want to find out more because they also tend to genuinely care about the streamer and their life story. So there can be various reasons when it comes to care and curiosity. But these are very important factors because streamers tend to tap into the emotions of the viewers and they want their viewers to come back for more and more content that they produce. So these are most of the reasons, most of the category of reasons for which people watch mukbangs. Now let's look into the impact of mukbang watching on the human mind and the human society that we live in today. Now, the Journal of Mental Health and Addiction published a piece in 2020 about the impact of problematic mukbang watching. The paper concludes that there is a definite link between problematic mukbang watching, internet addiction, and eating disorders. Now firstly, Problematic mukbang watching is different to recreational mukbang watching. When individuals indulge in excessive mukbang watching to compensate for problems in real life, that is termed as problematic mukbang watching. So like most things in life, problems arise with excessive consumption and addiction. So if you're somebody who watches an additional, uh, sorry, an occasional mukbang video or two, you know, if, if you're somebody who tunes into such videos time and again it's absolutely fine but if you're compelled to view them over and over again or to like really follow some mukbangers and come back to their videos every single day then there is a possibility that your watching pattern can be problematic so let's look into these two aspects associated with excessive consumption of mukbangs eating disorders now, when we talk about eating disorders, a 2016 study established that watching videos of excessive consumption of food by healthy-looking individuals can actually promote eating disorders in viewers. And these eating disorders can be binge eating and bulimia nervosa. Now, bulimia nervosa is a serious eating disorder wherein people eat excessive amounts of food and then get rid of food from their body 
by forcibly vomiting or consuming laxatives. So they firstly consume a lot of food and then take it all out. Studies have also shown that problematic mukbang watching can also lead to diminished pleasure received from actual eating in real life. So it's clear that watching videos of food all the time can put you off food or make you overindulge. Now let's look into the second aspect, internet addiction. Now when we talk about internet addiction, several studies have stated that problematic mukbang watching can lead to increased use of the internet which can then lead to internet addiction. Now internet addiction is an umbrella term for dependency on activities that need the internet. These can include online gaming, online gambling, social networking, pornography and other activities. The possibility of internet addiction increases when there isn't offline equivalent for a particular activity. So you have to depend on the internet. And this is specifically the case with mukbangs. Now one is unlikely to be able to be in situations where they could just watch other people eat in real life. So there is no offline equivalent to mukbang streams. And internet addiction has always been equated to substance addiction. By several studies, the negative effects could include poor sleep quality, insomnia, academic failure, relationship problems and more. In parallel with general internet addiction, one must also consider addiction to specific applications or avenues that can be used to watch certain types of mukbangs. Now, at the start of the tutorial, we spoke about two aspects, individual problems and societal problems. So let's look at societal problems. In 2019, the American Journal of Clinical Disorders reported a two-fold rise in eating disorders worldwide in the 2013 to 2018 period as compared to the 2000 to 2006 period. So there is clearly a rise, a substantial rise in eating disorders. And the National Association of Anorexia Nervosa and Associated Disorders reports that more than 10,000 people die in the United States because of eating disorders. Now, it's clear that there are obviously several reasons leading to an increase in eating disorders today, but with a link between mukbangs and eating disorders, however strong or weak it is, one has to question the continuing popularity increase of mukbangs and gauge its impact on their own minds and also the society that we are all a part of because indirectly or not, to whatever extent, we are affected by this phenomenon. Again, we are referring here to excessive and compulsive consumption of content and not just occasional viewing. Let's move on to the important discussion point then. Do you watch mukbangs? If you do, then what is the reason for you to watch them? If no, then do you know people who watch mukbangs? And what would be the potential reasons for them watching mukbangs? If you follow mukbangers, do you feel the urge to continually follow their, st st their story, their journey, or basically have an emotional connection with them? And finally, how do you think mukbangs affect the society we live in? Has it changed the society for better or for worse? So please share your story in the comment section. It will just add to the the learnings that we've derived from this tutorial and it will also help you introspect. It will also help you understand your own mindset. So please answer these questions or just share your story in the comment section. And as always, thank you very much for your attendance to this tutorial. I hope this was helpful for you. It's a very interesting topic. There are other topics, investigative topics that is, that you'd want to cover in this tutorial, in this channel, then please let me know in the comment section. And as always, please like, comment, subscribe, and share the word. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.